For the last day I've been going through the Mark Darwin videos to check for all the uh, things that are in there. He does talk a lot about AB and his method to uh, yeah to defraud or claim fraud in doing so. But anyway, so um, going through and pulling out the evidence that's in those videos which are scattered across several different channels and uh, as I've found in different names as well that I came across a couple of videos that Mark Darwin did where they were unusually long for Mark Darwin and he was talking to Arthur and Fiona uh, from Love for Life about things that they had said about truthology. Now I went to their website which is an old website and um, a lot of the links aren't working and I couldn't find anything that was related to truthology but I did look at a few videos back in that era to try and see what might have been said and I came across one video that I listened to and I thought wow I think I might share that with people because um, this is a couple uh, Arthur and Fiona are a couple from New South Wales they've spent a lot of years in alternative communities and trying to get uh, become independent so that they are not dependent on uh, anybody or anything and so they've had a lot of trial and error and they've also seen a lot of what's gone on in New South Wales and the particular interest that they were talking about was in this one here which is the dreams of life part 5d images of deception the intelligence agents amongst us now as I was listening to it and all the different things that um, they were talking about I mean they, there's a lot of common sense that they've brought up in there but they also named people that are, are clearly uh, infiltrators into um, these communities and they talk about it very simply uh, Arthur gets very passionate and uh, he does get to talk on a bit there in some stages bless him but you know um, listen through to the end especially if you're in New South Wales in northern New South Wales because this will affect you and it's funny how that a lot of the people that he called out as controlled narratives are pretty much um, a lot of people I've called out uh, people like Jordan Maxwell David Icke and um, well others there's and uh, there's one of them uh, Franco Collins that he's called out and Franco Collins comes up in relation to Mark Darwin See, and going back to the early years of Mark Darwin and all the people that he was associated with because uh, Adrian Brennock was also associated with um, Mark Darwin at that time he'd been a partner of his for over a year and by this time had accumulated five successes and this was in 2013 and Mark McMurtry was also on the scene as well he's mentioned in videos they seem to share the same lawyers and move in the same circles uh, so back in 2013 at least Adrian Brannock, Mark McMurtry and Mark Darwin knew each other and they were all doing different things coordinating with uh, a few select solicitors and accountants and an interesting thing I found out uh, about uh, Mark Darwin's foundations in listening to the videos 
that when he was in the UK, he said that he was there for ages trying to find a bank where they could set up the foundations. And then finally, he found a bank that would do it. And then he said that there were people that were going to come in from Portugal and Holland and other places like that to set up a foundation because he had found a bank that would do it. And then I thought, well, that's very interesting because ultimately then what it means is that they need to find a bank that will cooperate with the kind of setup that he wants to do. Now, clearly, if uh, legitimate banks are going to keep knocking him back and finally, after all this searching, they've finally found one that will do it. I mean, it's like so many of his other things where he's actually promoting people to turn around and claim to go and make a claim on, oh, look, on my credit card, you know all this stuff that I spent on my credit card? I think there's fraud on there. And he says that the consequence is that you, your name might get listed at VEDA, that, you know, he doesn't tell you that you might end up in jail for perjury, for swearing a false declaration. It's not bloody fraud if you spend it yourself. And claiming that there's fraud on there, you know, and Adrian Brennock did that five times. But anyway, as I go down these different roads to investigate the different accusations from people or why Mark Darwin felt it necessary to actually go out of his way and do two videos to answer what um, Arthur and Fiona were actually saying about truthology. And I dare say it's something along the same lines as what they said about Franco Collins, that he's selling bullshit. It, it, it's all crap. And, uh, you know, I think that this couple are good to listen to in that, that they have pretty much seen all the harebrained ideas and sovereignty, I want to set this up, free man kind of stuff. And, you know, um, I'd say they've seen a lot of it and they've probably heard pretty much all of it. So, you know, they, I think that they've figured out that there are a lot of um, people out there that are snake oil salesmen and a lot of them are in the alternative side of things. And it's not just in the media, it's in the communities as well. But anyway, I will upload um, the video of um i just edited down the the beginning bit of this video it's just uh, around 39 minutes i'll leave a link to the original um youtube channel because uh you may be interested in listening to what they've got to say on other matters now there are certain things that um like I listen to all different types of perspectives and when you listen to certain people you get a certain understanding of the kind of heart space they're coming from and these to me are genuine people they're not making out to be perfect they're just telling people what they believe in and Arthur, when he um, does get very um, enthusiastic about explaining his passionate views, um, I agree with a lot of what he says. Maybe I don't agree for exactly the same reasons, but inherently the values that we are all aiming at when we look at the ambition behind setting something like Nightcap on Minjimbal up, if it wasn't such a bloody big scam, you know, it's an ambition and a dream for most people to actually get some reconnection back to your, the land 
and to find yourself. I mean, we get so caught up in these artificial worlds of rush, rush, rush. And I think that's why, you know, with 2020, there's probably a lot of people when they were forced to not be in that rushed lifestyle and they had to actually start looking at themselves, looking at their interpersonal relationships. Yes, 2020 has been very difficult for millions of people all over the planet. But it has also been, in a way, a birthing process. A birthing process for a new consciousness that can only come when enough people are aware that we have to change things. And since none of us can change it on our own, we can't change the big things, but if there is enough of us working towards the same outcomes, we will actually achieve it. And that is a lot of what Arthur and Fiona are saying in here, is that like um, with Max Egan, he constantly makes people focus on the negative. And if that is where a lot of people are focusing their thoughts and worrying about the negative, that is likely to manifest it into reality. I mean, if our thoughts weren't so powerful, they wouldn't need to have placebos in every clinical trial because the power of the mind is, well... <laughs> It's stronger than reality in that sense. And, you know, the, the fact that even science has said that it is thoughts that create reality, not the other way around. So if you want to create a reality, you need to start looking at the reality you're dealing with. And you can't do that with your head in the sand or up in the clouds in all these airy fairy ideas. You've got to get real and then you've got to look at yourself and say, right, what can I do? So they're giving out some really good advice as far as um, dealing in your own personal communities. And also what they say is that anyone that comes from the point of view of I want this and I, I want my sovereignty. I want to own this. This belongs to me. Anyone that is in the I status is wrapped up in the selfish. You need people that are, you know, I like the way he says it, that, you know, if I am worried about what you get and if everybody was like that, well, then none of us would go without. Because if we were all worried about what our fellow man would have, then none of us would actually go without. I mean, yes, in a lot of respects, humanity is still an ideal in the shaping. But that's something that right now you get a choice in shaping. You know, we are making history in the world. We really are. You just don't realise at the small level how much you're going to affect the large and the whole. And all you have to do is perhaps shift the way that you're thinking about something to look at it from a different perspective. And I know that that's easier said than done because trust me, been there, done that. And through sometimes lots of years of wishing, wow, I wished I could feel differently about this. I wished I could look at it from a different perspective. Suddenly one day I had a different perspective and I wasn't emotionally attached. I could still see everything going on, but it didn't, you know, you, you don't get worried sick or anything like that. But anyway, that's way off subject in um well in some ways yes but in other ways no because anything we do in this world we never do it that it just affects us it always affects other human beings so if you can consider that everything that you do is for the benefit of fellow of 
your fellow man. And we all felt that way. Well, then we'd all be in a good place. And really, it is an ideal now, but the only way to start with an ideal is what you can do to bring that ideal into reality in your area, with you, so that it ripples out and starts to affect the whole. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the next thing now. <laughs> All right, so it was these videos, there's actually two of them that I've actually put together that um, on this channel, <laughs> notice the name of it is actually called Admin Truth, but the name is AB Truthology. AB, Adrian Brennock. <laughs> yeah, he, they've been associated. All right, so it's this video here from seven years ago, Mark's response to Arthur Christian Love for Life on this channel. At 16 minutes and that was on the I think it was the no the 8th of May that one and then on the other channel he did this one which is seven minutes long and that was done on the 14th of May so what I've done is that I've joined them both together because um, yeah there's talk in there that clearly Arthur and Fiona had accused Truthology of ripping people off. Now, I he mentions in here this um, Beatrice that used to be his previous partner, which I presume was before Stephanie, who was before Caroline Coleman, his current one. <laughs> okay, so yes, um, that's his three steps or through the the partners. Uh, brief gossip there and um, see there's some mention in these videos that um, Beatrice has something to do with this guy called Michael Batelic now I've tried to find this Michael Batelic or Patelic or however but I can't find any reference so if anyone's listening to this, they know this Michael Batelic or whoever he speaks of in this video, I'd really like to know because I cannot come up. Clearly, I'm spelling the name completely wrong. And sometimes when you hear someone spell the name, I mean, it could be a foreign name and the way I'm spelling it, well, it's not bringing up anything that I think is the right things anyway. And, but this Michael Batelic had something to do with Beatrice, his ex-partner, and how there was accusations of ripping people off. And apparently Mark Darwin sent um, a private video to Beatrice and Beatrice sent a copy of that video to Arthur and Fiona, which is this seven minute video here with Mark Darwin responding to you know it was a private video and it's interesting to note the two different approaches that he's got in both the videos that um, one he's more on the oh, holier than now I'm better than you and on this one it's more well, <laughs> more like he doesn't want someone to take what they've seen and go public with it because, you know. <laughs> and the thing being too that um, he also says that um, AB records everything. They all record everything to do with the truthology. They document everything to protect themselves against the accusations from others because as you hear in this video that they need protection from all the ac accusations because they don't guarantee anything so if it stuffs up and you lose your house which according to Mark Darwin in 2013 there had been 30 to 35 people that they dealt with in mortgages 
and only 13 of those people were still living in those houses. Now he says he's, he thinks he's got a belief onto why that has occurred. Now he doesn't actually say it in this video, but he actually says it in the Freedom Summits when that, um, oh, what's his name? That bald-headed guy talks in the Freedom Summits about how um, it's whether the way your mortgage is and the way it's classified uh, and what kind of equity or the part where he says that if you can find someone to sign off to give you a loan when you've really got no reason to substantiate that you've got the equity or anything to pay that loan. So, yeah, there are... But there are a lot of... Um, he doesn't bring up accusations in here, but the funny thing is that he says you know, don't listen to gossip. Now, every I'm not a gossiper, but the thing that I do hear when I do hear people gossip is that there's a big difference between people talking about issues that have been raised and people that gossip. But anyone that wants to dismiss something that is contrary to what they want to you know, oh look, it's just gossip. In fact, I saw that in a letter from a real estate agent where they dismissed accusations against Nightcap on Minjimbul as, oh, just gossip. Well, the thing is that gossip is um, something that I would actually consider is malicious and people just making up stuff to pass the time and day. Most of the stuff that you hear from real people is not gossip. But I'd have to say that a lot of people participate in gossip. They get fed into these um, stories that other people start up and, yeah, who knows where it ends up. But anyway. Now, another thing I would also say or ask if that anyone's got any Mark Darwin videos out there um, that you cannot find on YouTube or anywhere. I mean, now I've got videos you can't find on YouTube because Mark Darwin's hidden them or he's made them private so you can't see them. Most of the Freedom Summit ones are all gone now and I think that's pretty disappointing for a lot of people that used the one for Mark McMurtry as a link to, you know, supporting the OSTF movement and all this other sovereignty stuff. It was interesting to note too that back in 2012-2013, OSTF wasn't too much talked about, but this OPPT, um, what is it? Um... Yeah, it's this one, uh, the something people's trust or something. Uh, I only found about out about that uh, not so long ago and I looked at the consequences and most of the people that were involved at the top of that are in jail. You know, so the, the consequences for a lot of these so-called sovereignty and freedom movements isn't just whether your name might get mentioned at VEDA or not. Uh, there's real criminal con consequences because they are, most of them, you know, trying to find loopholes in the system that doesn't want to have loopholes in it. So, of course, if there's any way, shape or form that they can come back on you, chances are you're going to end up in jail. And that's behind any sovereignty movement. And do they know what you're up to? Well, listen to um, Arthur and Fiona's opinion on uh, the intelligence agents amongst us. Interesting to note too that I think Mark Darwin um, might have actually mentioned the name of the person that actually b bought 
David Icke out to Australia for the first time. Now he's mentioned a few names in the videos that he's done back in 2012 and 13. There's one particular lawyer's name that he always is beaten around the bush and it's this barrister guy. And they don't seem to be wanting to give his name up very much because him and A.B. and Mark McMurtry all use this guy. And I, I don't know, Jeff Pruss or whatever his name is, but I have to look up on that um, a previous post too from that, um, oh, whatever it is, yeah, sidetrack anyway, but um, to find out what these names were because there are a lot of people in the legal profession that are directing the public faces that we see and the accusations that, well, the, there's a, um, a United Kingdom influence without a doubt. Even Mark McMurtry talks about how he's best buds with the ex-top guy that's the Crown Prosecutor from the UK. They're getting um, some kind of legal leverage to pretty much stuff over the system and to try and find the loopholes. Now, they've had a certain success with debts and Mark McMurtry is trying with invalidating pretty much the laws and the, the, the government of this country with all his actions through the OSTF. And he's going to try and do that under the names of all the tribes. He's, he's literally going to try and, I suppose, a, a quiet takeover of the country, <laughs> become king of us all, though. Yeah, sure. That'll be a cold day in hell when that had happened, when some drunk little fat tubby would think that he can't even decide who he is. You know, sorry, not going to have that man ruling over me. <laughs> See, pro people have probably looked at what I've been doing recently and have thought that, you know, it's only in a little area and it's only a little problem and it doesn't affect you. But pretty much wherever you are in the world, there is the same level of corruption in your own society. Uh, the fact that it affects a rural community more readily should highlight the problems that we do have. And especially with people that deliberately set out to frustrate all the human beings, to profit from it, to avoid responsibility. I mean, I've been nauseated listening to Mark Darwin and how he has told people to follow Adrian Brennock's plan if they feel like going into the police and reporting fraud on their credit cards. If you want to risk going to jail, if you want to risk not being as good a liar and like AB, who one of his skills is fucking people over, if you can't be like that, the chances are you're going to end up in jail. Just like the people that uh, started this OPPT. I mean, there have been multiple things. Even Max Egan with his world citizen scam back in 2014. They couldn't set up any kind of sovereignty, so they tried to find a tax dodge in Palestine, of all places. And, yeah, he spent most of his time in other countries trying to sort out their problems. He's never voted in our country. He's never contributed to the governance or the taxes. He's never contributed to anything, and yet he's the one out there that is now a leading voice that is controlling um, the narrative. And essentially, I've already said it before about Max Egan. Max Egan is for sure 
a um, controlled narrative. He's he's um, he's an infiltrator, and he's designed to niggle and agitate and control the narrative towards focus on the negative outcome because the more that focus on it the more likely it's going to happen because that which you focus on you will create <laughs> and on that note I'll leave you to focus on the next couple of uploads as I said that this one for the intelligence agents amongst us it's a couple from New South Wales have a listen because you know, it. if you're anywhere, it's going to affect you at some level. And where there are intelligence agents, there's also that nasty side of them too that comes with that type of control that you think is only in the elite systems of the world. The kind of occult activities that occur that you really just, well, you didn't think that it infiltrated to the very basic levels of human beings, but it does, because that's the way these infiltrators are designed. There are intelligence agents amongst us, controlled narratives. I've already said before how the CIA came into the Northern Rivers area to take over the drug trade back in the 70s. So they control the drug cut trade, they control a lot of the criminal activity. And so, yes, you're starting with a lot of problems to begin with. But they're not that much of a problem if you actually know they exist. Because the occult or the hidden things that people get up to, the sneaky, deceitful, wrong things that they do. Once you know what they're up to, whether they admit it or not, you know the reality and the honesty of that situation. And you should be able to then spot that more and more in others around you that are likewise feeding you a controlled narrative. Now if you think about it, if you had a time machine you could fast forward for five years and Nightcap on Minjimbo would be doing exactly the same thing and will have not progressed anymore. Except maybe there might be a few more lost investors and maybe a lot more millions of dollars to account for that all those bad records just have no idea where anything went to. But anyway, I got a bit off subject on a few things today. Um, I just wanted to introduce people with the concept of realising just exactly what you may be living with in day-to-day -day life around you. And that those that are offering options to escape control, you might only just be walking into another controlled type of situation. And that's more than likely. As I've said it in previous videos, and I do not doubt it, that every single alternative community has been infiltrated in the northern New South Wales area and probably all of Australia. I mean, it's not like they just have one little part under control, they'd have the whole lot under control. So just listen to what Arthur and Fiona have to say. Well, more Arthur. <laughs> yeah, Arthur's a bit like me. Bless him. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna leave you with that. I'll leave you with a few links to um, so that you can look at other videos and the original and also have a look at these other video sites of Mark Darwin. There's, these ones are very interesting on Admin Truth. These are actually his 10 modules that he talks about in his four-step strategic program or whatever. And you hardly recognize him here with his fluffy hair but 
Yeah, he's and you have to look at each one of them. They're repeats. Uh, you can miss out. Session eight is session eight. It doesn't matter whether it's marketing or truthology. And there's a few different other videos on there that are do just all pretty much marketing and promotional. So, yes, that's said and done. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll upload the other two clips so that you can listen for yourself. One's with Mark Darwin and the other one is with um, Arthur and Fiona of Love for Life. And I'll catch you next time. Take it easy.